right, so welcome to fxhippo.com, uh, Corner Painting with Maka Tutorial Part 2. Make sure you've checked out Part 1. All right, guys, so Maka is done tracking. As you can see, it's all blue here. So if you look at that blue rectangle that we drew earlier, you can see that it's pretty much perfectly tracked to the painting. Towards the end here, you can see it's a bit off. But if you just adjust that a little bit, It'll make a small difference in After Effects once we get there. All right, so now I mentioned the grid tool earlier. There's another tool which you can use to check your track. Come over here to stabilize and just see what that does. Scroll through the timeline. So now the painting of what you tracked, the item that you tracked, is stabilized in the middle of the shot. If there's any major movement, other than a bit of, as I have here, a bit of tilting and swerving sort of thing. If there's anything dr more drastic than that, then your track has pretty much failed. So your painting should stay in the middle. Check it out. It's pretty cool. All right. Now the grid tool I mentioned, if you add that and take off stabilize, just check that the grid lines, let's, okay, look over here, this little red dot. And that part of the grid sort of lines up with the red dot. So just look throughout the whole timeline and check if that, grid keeps aligned with that dot and yes it does pretty well same goes for maybe this part of the grid or this part just just have a look through and i'm pretty happy with this track um i'll go into more detail different tutorials if you have some trouble so we'll go through all the steps you can do if you have any trouble with any tracks etc etc but for now i'm happy and i'm ready to go into after effects so Export data down here. You come to export tracking data. Make sure you clicked on the layer that you made. Export tracking data. Now yours might look different if you have version um, one of Mocha. This is version two. Format, all right, there's a few different formats. So you wanna take the bottom After Effects corner pin, which supports motion blur. Um, Cause motion blur will pretty much sell the shot for us. So choose that one. Copy to clipboard. Okay, now we're ready to go over to After Effects. So switch on over to After Effects. All right, so in this case, we want to go ahead and create a solid. So layer, new, solid. You can make it any color you want. I'm just gonna make it, yeah, reddish red for now. All right, so that's covering the whole thing. So what you do is frame zero, click on the red solid, and then command V, right? So command V for paste. So if you go through the clip now, you'll see that that red shape is now your new painting, which is pretty cool. All right, so what you wanna do now is turn on motion blur. You see here, you come here to motion blur, simulate shutter duration, um, and select it for the red shape. And then turn on the global shutter, uh, the global motion blur. Enables motion blur for all layers with the motion blur switch set, which is this one. So enable that. And then now if you scrub through, you'll see that the edges blur a bit with the movement. It, it just sells the shot 100 times better than having sharp edges. All right, next step you need to do is you create a pre-composition of that red shape. On the red shape, you go to Layer, Pre-Compose, or Shift, Apple, C. Name it Corner Pin. All right, so we have that pre-comp there. So open it up, and it's pretty much just the red shape. But if you go back to this corner pin, to the main composition, you'll see that that shape does not look the same. So that shape has been squished to fit that the corner pin data that we gave it. So that's important to remember when we replace the image. So go ahead into the corner pin uh, pre-comp and find an image which you're gonna replace it with. So I chose um, this image, another one of Marlene von Jarsfeld's paintings. Um, so I'll grab that and drag it into the pre-comp, the red solid. Oh, sorry, put it above the red solid. All right. Now, a cool little trick. Right-click, transform, fit to comp. 
So it looks really bad now. It looks all squished or whatever. But if you go into your corner pin toot comp, your main composition, you'll see that it's perfectly fit for you'll see that it's perfectly fit into the painting. So if we turn that off and on, voila. So it's pretty cool. So keep that in mind that whatever you put in here might look distorted, but when it comes out here, it'll look fine. So there are some issues with the edge popping up, but I reckon once it's moving, it'll be less noticeable. So we'll just go with that for now. It's not too bad. It's a bit noticeable, but I mean, it gets the job done. It's pretty cool. Alrighty. Okay, next step um, would be adding the text that I had in the uh, in the main promo. So this sitting pretty text. That's the name for exhibition, and then her name and website. So pretty much we're going to use the same tracking data that we used for the corner pin, which makes it a lot simpler. So um, what you need to do is go to your pre-comp, the corner pin pre-comp. Um, then in this pre-comp, make a new text layer. So let's say fxhippo.com. Oops. All right, make it a bit bigger. Actually, again, you can use the, the trick that I told you about. Right click, transform, fit to comp. Actually, sorry, fit to comp width. Transform, fit to comp width. And you can put that on top there. Maybe make it a bit smaller. Squish it a bit. All right, and if you go back to your main composition, you'll see that it's perfectly up there with some motion blur as well. So just another thing to mention with these sides that are popping out, um, what you can do is go back and track again. For example, this is the second track I've done. You can see this side here popping out. Um, with the first track I did, this one, it's much less noticeable as you can see. So go back, experiment with it a bit, um, just to see uh, just to try and get the best track for your your case. Or right, I'll just quickly show you how I added some cool little details. So I made a new adjustment layer. Adjustment layers pretty much affect anything under them. So what I like to do is make a bit of a vignette. So let's rename that adjustment layer vignette. Um, and then what I want to do is take the shape tool up here and use the rounded rectangle tool. Draw sort of a rough rounded rectangle here. Okay, so nothing's happening because there's no effect. So let's go over here to effect and presets. Exposure, so type in exposure. And then we have exposure, color correction. Drag it over to your vignette and take down the exposure to about five ish. Yeah, and then come down here to the mask and just subtract. So it doesn't look like a vignette yet. So let's click on the mask, press F for feather, and just feather that out. So it makes a nice vignette. You click on vignette, double M. Then you have all the mask options. And you can play with the expansion, see how far you want the the uh, the mask, the vignette to come in. So that's basically how I did it. Um, you can then play around with um, sort of transitions and dissolves if you're making a promo or just for fun, if you're replacing a sign or, or anything like that or a traffic light or whatever. So it depends on the case, but I think corner pitting is really useful and especially with Mocha's, you know, ease, ease of use with the, with the motion tracking. I think people don't don't uh, don't really know about Mocha, and I want to get Mocha out there to to everyone to use because everyone has it. If you have CS4 or CS5, so it's right there waiting. Um, all right. I hope that was useful for you guys. Our uh, corner painting with Mocha tutorial. If you look at my latest blog post, you'll see what you have in store. So get excited, and please keep sending in uh, any suggestions, etc., for tutorials. As I said, I got a really cool suggestion from Catbox Films on YouTube. 
not going to say what it is because it's secret. Uh, it's confidential. And if I tell you, I might have to, uh, yeah, do bad things to you. So, yeah, thanks again for uh, watching my tutorial. So stay tuned and visit fxhippo.com. Thanks, guys.